Well, hello everybody, Ian here with some uh, new developments on the layout before I sit to and build the baseboards. Uh, yeah, the baseboards have to be built sometime, but you know me, I keep putting it off and putting it off and putting it off because, uh, well, you know, I'm not the world's greatest uh, woodworker and, well, I have built baseboards in materials other than wood, but honestly, I feel like for this layout, wood... Wood will be the way to go, whether it's just two by one pine framed frame fur, like some plywood or what. So uh, baseboard construction has to come. But one last thing I did was I built a mock-up here. So uh, I usually rely on my artistic skills, my sketches to... Uh, to uh, visualise the layouts, but this time I thought, with so much riding on this, I thought I would go the whole hog and um, build a build a model. Lots of people swear by mock-up models, so I thought I would have a go. So uh, I'll bring the camera in close and we'll take a look at uh, what I've done. This then is the uh, display stand, fiddle yard, scenic fiddle yard section, call it what you will. You see a, uh, a hedgerow runs the, the full length of the scene here and trees frame the baseboard ends. So uh, I don't know if the section needs a proscenium arch that I built for it yet because um, perhaps the trees would be able to do just as good a job. So um, what would happen here is that uh, you would see the empty, empty baseboard section and well then a, excuse the, excuse the fingers, a, a, tr a cassette is then pushed into the scene like this and waits at a, si a signal which would be about here somewhere and then the train the electrical connections between the baseboards would be made and the train would go into the, the station scene station scene baseboard and do what the train does so and it would then return here to uh, to this point where it would then be driven off and the the uh, the cassette would have been hooked, be hauled out manually like it was the, in the reverse to what has had happened before. Here's the, here's the station baseboard. It's all looking rather idyllic here, surrounded by trees with a blue sky. And I just want to stand here and wait for the next train, however long that takes to get here. You know, one thing that I have been mulling over concerns the front edge of the baseboard. Do I edge this front edge with a hedgerow or do I have a road or perhaps a drainage ditch in front of that, you know? Uh, I seem to recall seeing a layout a long, long time ago now. It might have been Dave Lowry's Bevet. It was so small that I think he had a separate section that he added to the front of it to give it extra depth that shows. I think it was him. This was a long time ago, a good 30 years or more now. So anyway, I figured, why don't I add a section in front of the layout to add a little extra scenery depth? So you consider it like a, an apron stage or a thrust stage. So, uh, so I mocked that up and well, so we now have a little bit extra on the baseboard. I, I'm, I'm quite taken with the idea. I, what, what do you think? Of course, once I'd started building extra pieces, I couldn't stop. Uh, I, as you know, I've considered this station as a through station for a while. So, uh, of course, if I added a fiddle yard at the other end, at the left, at the right hand end as you look at it, it would need another fiddle yard and then I would need something to hide that because I don't think I would want to repeat myself with another display stand at the at the other end so uh, a conventional 
more conventional hidden siding fiddle yard arrangement at this side. So, uh, so I decided to uh, mock one up. And uh, there we go. So I don't know what would be in here at all yet. Uh, I'm thinking that I would probably have, I would probably extend the Goodyard siding into this baseboard where I would have perhaps a, a warehouse or uh, perhaps it would be an extension to RAF Northcotes or maybe a... Uh, Maybe a potato farm exchange siding, you know? It's just an idea at the minute, so I have no real idea what I would do there. But the potato farm siding and REF Northcotes both have their attractions. Anyway, I got a bit carried away there. But the concept I have is clearly a good one. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to come up with all these ideas, I think. So, uh, anyway... Next stage then will be to build some baseboards. So uh, off to the garage. Uh, hope I don't chop my hand off with a saw and uh, we will report back in a bit. So I was editing the video just now and uh, saw that it only amounted to like six minutes. Six minutes model railway talk? No, we can do better than that. So something very, very interesting arrived in my mailbox this week. Uh, this... Uh, Print Street number one by uh, Chris Mears. What is it? Is it a book? Is it a magazine? Yeah, as model railroad publications go, it's quite unlike anything, quite unlike anything out there. I mean, there's no indication on the cover that it's anything model railway related. And <laughs> I love that. That's great. Because so, for too long, model railway magazines have followed that tired old formula on the cover, you know, shouting the content at you in uh, large, bold type sizes, you know, sizes that are quite often in inverse proportion to the uh, length of the article in the magazines. Uh, so this is the, this is a breath of fresh air. So Chris himself even says that this isn't a model railway magazine, you know. Print Street is, it's a journal. It's layout designs, constructional techniques, rail fanning records, you know, it's all bound together in this deeply personal publication. And yeah, I followed Chris's Print Street blog for a long time. It, it resonates with me, I think. I think we might be kindred spirits in a way, and if I probably knocked on his door, he would welcome me in and we would share a cup of tea. Because a cup of tea is invaluable to uh, both our creative processes. I mean, we sh we've shared many a supportive message when I was working on the Bontoft Sandpit layout, for example. I mean, that was inspired by his own overlap baseboard concept, which is discussed in in his publications. Uh, we share many and many of the same opinions on things. He has a very unique way of uh, working on layouts. I think it's something that uh, a lot of people could learn from. You know, the uh, book, the book itself is basically, it's a repackaging of the blog content. And, uh, you know, books are better to read than blogs on the internet, you know. So, uh, so it's, it, it's great to actually have something in your hand and to, to flick through it. Uh, I, I, I love doing that. Because uh, as somebody who uh, designs and publishes the Micro Model Railway Dispatch, you know, I know of the struggles of designing page layouts and getting everything to fit in there. And and as a graphic designer, there's a couple of bits in there that make me go, mm, well, I wouldn't have done it that way. But then again, there are also pages in here that make me go, whoa, that's brilliant. So, uh, I mean, I love, I love the bold cover design, you know, three words and the date. Awesome. Uh, it is in white, which, uh, you know, I don't want to get it dirty. I don't want to look through it too much because I don't want to get this lovely pristine cover dirty. You know, I would love to do something like this with the um, Micro Model Railway Dispatch, but I, I'm not sure that the uh, the readership uh, would go for it because you know, I remember a few years ago back now, I was a member of the uh, Layout Design Special Interest Group and... Uh, 
they had a radical redesign of, uh, of their magazine and I thought it was great. It was brilliant. It was bold. It was exciting. But the uh, readership, the old guard readership said, oh, no, we don't like that. They pilloried the design and uh, wanted the old one back, which they uh, got. But And I left the layout design special interest group shortly after that because I didn't want to be associated with a group with such old-fashioned views. I mean, how can you push f forward the dis bounds of model railway design when your when your magazine, magazine, your your voice, your public voice, when that is locked in the past? You can't. So I think Chris's design is really forward and exciting. People complain about the image of the hobby at times these days, and uh, this personal approach is a breath of fresh air. Instead of conforming to a predetermined presentation, he sets out on his own path. Uh, he details the ups and downs of projects and techniques he uses and how he solves the problems that uh, his, his inabilities in a, his inability is a good word, Chris. So, uh, so these problems, his inabilities create. There's a particularly interesting solution to soldering dropper wires to a track that I'm going to try because I suck at soldering too. You know? uh, perhaps there is more room for more of us to present personal hobby publications like this, whether it be in online PDFs or on the printed page. You know? I myself have been mulling over a layout design book called The Journal of Layout Imaginings for, for a long time. There's an early version online over on iHomes.com that's never been acted on, and that was back in 2005, maybe. So, But putting things out there on the pe printed page, like, um, needs financial outlay to do it, and Chris should be praised for having the guts to get out there and put his money where his mouth is, you know, it's super. So sadly, though you can't go out and buy this one anymore now, Chris only printed 20 and all of them sold out immediately. So uh, hopefully there's going to be a print street too. And perhaps he'll print more of that one. Uh, perhaps you'll be able to get one then. I'm going to put in my order for print street. I'm going to put in my order for print street too right now. You know, in short, this, this is great. You know, we need more stuff like this. Well done, Chris. So if you've enjoyed the little video about the um, about the mock-up there and take my take on Chris's magazine. Keep uh, give the video a like and uh, keep following following on with the with the video blog by subscribing to the channel. And we will talk to you in a week. When maybe I will have some baseboards built. So we'll see you then. Happy modelling.